What's up everybody? I am on West Lake Toho today with Bob, local guy. Wants to learn some stuff about bass fishing, so we're out here on Toho going over some tips and techniques. And I wasn't gonna film today. It's actually about, what time is it? It's about 10.30 in the morning already, and we've been out here since daylight. Um, it was cold this morning. It was around 40 degrees, but it's starting to warm up. And uh, we're back in a little area of the lake out of the wind catching them on spinnerbaits. Bob already caught one a little over five on a spinnerbait. Would have been nice to have that on film, but <laughs> my cameras were in the case. And uh, I just caught one about three and a half pounds on a lipless crankbait, and we've caught a couple on chatterbait and stuff like that. But the fish are actually coming up schooling, chasing chat around, which is awesome, especially on the day after a cold front. So we're gonna see if we can start filming here right in the middle of the day and see if we can get enough fish to make a good video. So stay tuned and we'll see what happens. Oh, got him. Right when I turn the camera on, you get one. Little guy. Little guy. So we got this one. It's literally about 20 seconds after I just did the opening that you guys just saw. And this is a tiny little fish. And they're schooling right in the middle of the day. I think the shad are starting to spawn. And the last couple of cold fronts we've had have actually made the fishing better. But this is a old school, can't get them anymore, Excalibur one knocker. Now if you buy them, they're, they're a Booyah one knocker. Same company, but these were the better ones that everybody thought of. And he's just doing a nice little stop and go retrieve. And I'm throwing this chatterbait, so I only got one camera set up, so let's see what we can get in there. Yeah, if you can see them blowing up, it's it's guaranteed. Yeah. If you if you cast out, make the prettiest cast of your life and they come up blowing up on the other side of the boat. Just reel in as fast as you can and land on top of them and it's a guaranteed fish almost every time. Yeah, you come here in the dead of the summer, you can catch them on a worm, a worm, a worm, and a worm. <laughs> yeah. And a fluke a little bit. Oh, there's one on the jerk bait. About to jerk the rod out of my hand. So you turn the cameras on and the fish all shrink. <laughs> so, four different baits now. Probably be really good for YouTube if I buried a hook right in the middle of my hand, wouldn't it? I don't care that much about getting views. Jerk bait. So what I'm doing with my little stop and go retrieve with that lipless. I, I would, when you're doing the twitching, when you're going down, you have to kind of go down controlled to keep the bait in line with itself. Does that make uh, sense? I got you. And uh, I used to, I, a lot of people when they first start, they're fine because they're they're trying to still learn the motion and they have more control over it. Then up. then you go quicker and you start doing this. Yeah. And when you're flipping it around real quick, it'll flip over and hook itself and foul it. Oh, one just blew up right behind the boat or to the about 11 o'clock, real long cast. Yeah, see where, yeah, you just pointed at it. But see what I did? So you, you almost have to control the drop on it. I got you. There you go. Yeah. Oh. That was more like 10. I choked. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> bass ever. Is that smaller than? Yeah. Is 
Mm, 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 mm. Don't you flop around. Stop it. If you want the hook out of your head, Oh yeah. He probably didn't even see it coming. That was horrible. Horrible. It's bigger than any ones I caught on the jerk bait. Yeah, he came up and slapped at it. So I, I got a I got a Smithwick Rogue on, and I was gonna give you one of those because I got a bunch of them. But since I was catching little tiny fish, I figured maybe I'll give you a different one. <laughs> this is one of these Rick Clun jerk baits. It's actually I've had it for about two years, but it was still in the package. It's prettier. He's half the length. Fish eat weird though. I mean, they'll eat a bait that's almost the length. That'd be like going to Subway and going, I'd, I'd like a three and a half foot long sub, please. I'm not gonna chew it. I'm just gonna shove the whole thing down my throat at once. So, what I said a little bit about these before, so they, there used to be a brand or a, oh, a series called the uh, Excalibur, and they were pretty expensive, and they made the one knocker, and they stopped making them, and they still make them. They have a little K on them there right now for one knock, you know? Yeah. And uh, um, now they say Booyah, but people claim they don't work as well as they did when they were the Excalibur ones and a little bit more expensive. So you can actually, I have about seven or eight of the originals left, but you can find them, they're on eBay for like 50 bucks. I don't even care if I lose them. I don't really have any emotional attachments to any of my lures, so. Well, the funny thing is, I think my dad has like 20. <laughs> Keep some and sell the other ones on eBay and go buy a whole bunch of other stuff with them. <laughs> Yeah. Well, most people just throw them out and reel them in. Yeah. And you can, there's play. I've been in times where I catch them like that, but the majority of the time, there's, I do much better with some sort of cadence to it. Whether it's a stop and go, or yo yoing it, or ripping it, or, or working it through, you know, shaking it through the water, basically. They like to hit it up when it's pausing, not while you're moving it, when it's falling. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta fish it in and not reel it in. Yeah, it just, it increases the number of bites you get, and it's there. There's I can't remember the last time I actually picked up a lipless crankbait of any kind and just threw it out and reeled it, reeled it in. Yeah. So big Toho marinas were, oh, damn. There, ooh, there's one on that chatterbait. I got the camera on this time. I had three hits on that bite, on that cast. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, there's one, ooh, run, there's three fish with them. Look at this. There's, I don't know, just throw that jerk bait up this way and then bring it through there and see if they'll come and hit it. There's three fish with this fish. Oh, one just got you. Look at that. How cool is that? That is awesome. Hold on. I'm sure there's trouble. Oh, you got off? How awesome was that, though? That was cool. I wasn't even expecting it. My line just took off. So what will end up on film is I caught one about this size, maybe a little bigger, one cast before and realized I'm an idiot and I didn't have my camera on. And then two casts later, I caught that one 
three fish followed it and they actually came up and hit his jerk bait. They're running in schools through here. That was pretty awesome. That doesn't ha that doesn't work a lot, but they're they're when we're finding them, they're aggressive. So I figured if you just yeah. th threw up there past it because they disappeared, so I thought they kind of maybe went out a little bit. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That was bigger than the one I had on the chatterbait. I don't really want to go back to worm fishing when we can no. catch them on this. Yeah. I don't care if we go somewhere else to do it or what. There's one. On that jerk bait. Feels a little bit better, but I might just have him hooked weird. Where is he? Oh yeah, he's no. He's alright. They're getting a little bit bigger on the jerk bait. Not big, but oh, he's got a big old, like he's been. What kind of jerk bait I the other day, right? Well, the we're catching him on two different jerk, this is a very old school, a Rattle and Rogue, and that's a newer Rick Clun one. And they don't, I mean, we're not catching big ones, but I'll show yeah, the difference. Good. I think that's the name of the company let me that see. I got. So, let me the see that. Rick Clun or whatever. Yeah. So, they're about the same size, and they're similar in colors with the green back, and. This one's more got a foil finish to it, and that one's more translucent. But they got this one has a bigger lip, but be like the style of that one, and it's got heavier rattles in it. They're doing about the same thing. Yeah. And sometimes they'll get really specific on jerk baits, and sometimes they just don't care too much. Today, I think you just have to get it in front of one, and they'll hit it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah mine don't have, I don't think mine has a rattle. Right. There's some fish by these lily pad clumps. Oh, that's the wrong species. Jump off. Yep, look at this. I just threw on the other side of the pad. one of the better ones on a jerk bait I guess. Not a giant. Uh yeah, close. I think you, you had that one you had up to the boat when we had that double. Yeah, that, was that was a little bit bigger than this one. Unfortunately we didn't get to touch it. This one's not a bad one. Yeah. Not a bad jerk bait fish. They're kind of hovering around these pads. I almost thought about like picking up a worm and pitching in those pads, but I don't feel like putting <laughs> a worm. I'm so sick of worm fishing because I've been. Oh, did he come off? No, 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 no. I had three bites. Was it? It was big. I'm not going to lie. That was the heaviest hit I got off. Okay. Well, oh, there's one on the chatterbait on the back side of the grass. That thing was big. Get out of there. Oh, look, there's more. Do it again. Do it again with the jerkbait if, if it's ready. A whole bunch of fish followed him out again. Are we going to do this again? I don't know where they went. Oh, I'll come back in there. That'd be awesome if we did it twice. A little bit more tight, tight quarters though this time. There was two fish with them. It's a little chunky one. They're definitely running around in schools. Chatterbaits do not do well. I mean, you catch a lot of, they just hang up a lot. Fish right here. 
Oh, there we go. Throw right in here. Bunch of them right here. Look, right beside, man, that when you get on them, they're just crazy. There goes that one. They're right in there. Let's see if we can get some more of them. When I saw that one blow up, there was like two with them. They're just traveling a lot right now. For the video's sake, this is my jerkbait rod, in case anybody's wondering. I don't know if you can order this one. It's a Muse Black from 13. Airboat's cranking up right on time. It, but see how short that handle is? It's a little compact handle. So when you're twitching this bait, it's not binding up with your forearm. And it's only six foot two, six feet two inches. I like a short jerkbait rod. So this would probably be a six two medium heavy. And that's what I use for jerk baits. Bob and I are about done fishing for today. We've been out here all day on Lake Toho. We really only fished two areas today. We started out on a shell bed when it was freezing cold, like 40 degrees, which is freezing cold to me. Um, we didn't get any fish out there. We got some bites. Came back in here. I didn't start recording. I didn't bring the camera out this morning because I didn't think it was going to be that good, to be honest with you, being so cold, bluebird skies. And then Bob whacked into a five pounder on a spinner bait. And then I caught one, a decent one, shortly after that. So I brought the cameras out. The fish got a little bit smaller. I forgot to record a couple fish. I had the camera turned off, which is a bad mistake to make. Again, lost some sound on some fish, but hopefully. This video turned out great. We caught them on chatter baits, spinner baits, lipless crank baits, and I think the winner would have been a jerk bait. I think we caught the most on jerk bait. Yes. Not a lot of big fish, much smaller fish on the jerk bait, but we were just kind of found some of these pre spawn fish chasing shad around back in this area, open water. They'd move out in the open water, then they'd move back up into the scattered lily pads and some consuming grass clumps. And uh, we just kind of chased them around all day and really didn't move around. But this is one of the first videos in a long time that I've done where we didn't catch a single fish on a Texas rig worm. All power fishing. Which is not my forte, but I like catching them on other stuff. So hope you like the video. Subscribe to my channel and we'll see you next time. See you, Bob. See ya.